and good morning, River City, and happy Thanksgiving. It's good to see you all. It really is good to see you. Uh, hey, we're obviously doing something a little bit different this morning for uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, we're not really uh, having a sermon as much as we're just taking some time to have some devotional thoughts about Thanksgiving. Um, are you looking forward to it? Are you looking forward to the holiday? Uh, I know I am. Uh, Josh, what are you and your family doing for Thanksgiving? Yeah, so we are, I've kind of mentioned this over the last few months, but we're in that first like semester, I guess you could say, of uh, empty nesting. And so uh, this is one of the years I'm really looking forward to Thanksgiving. Uh, both the boys will be home from school. And so uh, super excited to get them in this week. And then uh, I have some family coming over. So if you're here last week, you know, there's a good chance I'll be standing out by the smoker on Thanksgiving <laughs> Day. But um but no, we have, we're going to have a full house. So how about you guys? We're, uh, we're having a, kind of a small family gathering. The grandchildren really do not enjoy traditional Thanksgiving foods very much. Now, I have to have it because it's tradition. So we're still having a turkey breast, mashed potatoes. You've got to have those and, and stuffing. You've got to have all that. But our grandson, Kaleo, he really likes corn dogs. And so... We're going to make homemade corn dogs uh, together, which that ought to be a lot of fun. And then Mackenzie, uh, our granddaughter, she is really into seafood. So we're having shrimp on Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be cooking all day, but we're going to have a lot of fun. We hope that you have a really special Thanksgiving, no matter uh, what or how you are going to be celebrating. Hey, as we're thinking about Thanksgiving... You know, when we, when we talk about spiritually significant holidays, we normally think of Christmas and Good Friday and Easter, and rightly so, because those are holidays that are, are focusing on, you know, some of the special events of the story of Jesus, and it totally makes sense. But Thanksgiving is really supposed to be a spiritually significant holiday as well. While it's not tied to a specific event in Jesus' life, it is something that is to remind us of our blessings that we have received from God. Originally, you know, it was commemorating the provisions that God gave to the early uh, European immigrants here and as they were uh, trying to settle in this new land, uh, at least it was a new land for them. Uh, and so even today, there's still a lot of focus, especially in the agricultural part of our country, on the, the feast, the, the thanksgiving for the harvest that has taken place. And, and so that's why we eat a lot around uh, Thanksgiving. But it really is meant to be a time to thank God for all the things that he's given us. It's more than the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. How many of you watch that? Do you watch that? Um, fewer hands than last yeah, time. <laughs> yeah. More people, fewer hands. The, old, the older <laughs> service, yeah, they definitely watch that. How about football? How many of you watching football? Yeah, a lot more doing that. Uh, it used to be that Thanksgiving was the day that we made our plans for uh, the Christmas shopping season. But now, like... Black Friday's been going on for about three months already. Like, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, it's also, you know, the height of all the, the Starbucks pumpkin stuff, you know. So Thanksgiving has a lot of things tied to it, but the reality is, is that Thanksgiving should be spiritually significant because it's for people who know God. Stop and think about it for a minute. If, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, and you're supposed to be taking time to remember all of your blessings, like, who are you thanking? Like, are you thanking Amazon or Instagram? Like, who are you giving thanks to? For those of us who know Jesus Christ, this is a really important time because it is a reminder to us to slow down a bit, stop and reflect and realize God has blessed us so incredibly much. And that's why we come together at this holiday just to really thank him because we have a relationship with the Lord God Almighty. As we are uh, reflecting this morning on the meaning of Thanksgiving, we picked a couple verses from Colossians to kind of be our theme, living thanks. Yeah, scripture has a ton to say about Thanksgiving, right? Pastor Jesse read a verse to us as he started his little time with us. Um, talking about Thanksgiving, but Paul also in Colossians 2 uh, gives us this text, and I have you read this along with me. So then, just as you receive Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. You know, as I reflect on those verses, I'm challenged not only to give thanks for my material, physical blessings, but also my spiritual blessings. 
And I think the Apostle Paul is, is trying to turn our attention just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Keep that in mind. That's really should be the foundation of our thankfulness. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions this morning as we try to reflect on that a little bit. What would your life be like if you didn't have Jesus? Have you stopped to think about that? Most of us in this room have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What would your life be like if you didn't know the Lord? What would your life be like if you didn't know that there was a God of the universe who loved you, who cared about you? How would your life be different? How would things change if you didn't know that you were forgiven for all of your mess ups? If you didn't have the, the hope that someday we were gonna live forever with him, what would be the purpose of your life? What would you be trying to accomplish if you didn't have Jesus? You know, some of us have walked with the Lord for a, a long time. We've had this relationship, and sometimes we just need to pause and think, wow, I am so incredibly blessed that I get to daily have this relationship with the Savior of the earth. You know, uh, last week, Josh was talking a little bit about uh, the difference between just having Jesus as a rabbi and having Jesus as the Lord of your life. And to really be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple, living thankfully for our relationship with him is really at the core. We are incredibly blessed. We know that we're saved. We know that we have been forgiven. We have a peace that passes understanding. We have a, a joy that people cannot comprehend. We've got a purpose for living and a mission for the way that, that we're supposed to spend our time here on earth. We are incredibly blessed and we have a new identity in him. First Peter chapter two, some of my very favorite verses in all of scripture. But you, and, and hear this, this is for you. If you are a follower of Jesus, this is the word of God for you. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now, right now, you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We have a new identity in him. And so if we stop and think about the fact that we have received Christ Jesus as Lord, we've got so much to be thankful for because we're a new creation in him. And that's at the very core of what Thanksgiving is supposed to be all about. That's what it means when we say living thanks, that we are thankful for that relationship with him. You know, as Mark talked about this new identity and that we are a new creation. And that is definitely something we need to celebrate and be thankful for. But the reality is that that's just the beginning. You know, it's not enough to just come before Christ and say, hey, I am placed my trust in you and then receive salvation. You know, we don't do anything to earn our salvation. Uh, it is a gift from God, right? It is grace that is poured out to us. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that is the launching point that should launch us into a journey with Christ that sees us become more and more like Jesus the longer we live with Jesus. And Paul paints a picture of that in this text, right, where he says that we are to be rooted and built up. And so first he gives us this picture of being rooted, uh, this picture of a tree. And we know how important roots are, right? It's roots that grow and that it's from roots that plants get their nourishment and plants are able to grow and produce, whether it's vegetables or fruit or it's trees that are able to get tall and withstand storms and withstand challenges, right? In the same way, we as Christ followers, when we put our trust in Christ, we, we begin this journey where we should then begin growing and we should begin having depth to our life. And then Paul also says we are to be built up. And if you actually go to the Greek there, it's, what Paul does is he's using a present tense of this verb. And it literally means being built up. So it is a proactive statement. It is a statement of saying that we are to continually be growing in our faith. 
right? So we have this new identity. We are a new creation. We have this foundation. Jesus is our foundation. But from there, we really should begin building upon that and building a life that begins to look more and more like Jesus. You know, as I was thinking about this text, uh, many of you know we go to Mexico. We take our high school and college group to Mexico every spring. And that's an incredible trip. And I was just thinking about the picture of that trip um, as it's coming up. And, you know, the hard work is... There's this hard day of laying foundation where we literally are, are mixing concrete by hand and then pouring that and then shaping this foundation. And, and I'll tell you, that's an amazing thing. And it's an amazing thing to work that hard and then see that at the end of the day. But I'll tell you, it's about late day two or day three where you've been putting together walls and you're doing the hard work on the ground. And then all of a sudden you begin standing those walls and you begin to see this house. And I'll tell you, there's just... I've done that trip. I don't know, Mark, how many years I've done that trip. But every single time when those walls go up, there's this unexplainable joy in seeing this thing come together. And I'll tell you one, just a shameless plug. If you are in high school, college, you need to make this trip a priority. We are going. There's an info meeting after the third service today um, and again, December 11th. But I'll tell you, watching that take place, I, I imagine that's what our father sees or wants to yeah. see. Like we have the foundation, but then the walls coming up and being built into something beautiful. And, and there's ways we begin to do that work in our lives, right? We play a part in this. Part of this is we talk about this regularly, that you need to be in God's word on a regular basis, right? Last week I mentioned it. It's not enough just to be hearers of God's word, but what are we supposed to be? Doers, right? So we're in God's word. And then we're putting that into practice. I'd say... Along with that, we need to have time where we're in prayer. Look, I, this is not overly deep. This is very simplistic. I look at Jesus' life in the Gospels, and when I see that Jesus regularly withdrew to pray, and I see that Jesus needed time of prayer, I figure this. We probably do too, <laughs> right? It's not, so we don't need to dive into all the text on prayer. I think it's pretty simple. If Jesus needed to withdraw and spend time in prayer and spend time with the Father, it's probably a really good habit for us to develop and engage in. Third, I'd say growing roots and building our lives up to look more like Jesus is, is taking on the roles that Jesus did. And one of those is a servant, right? Jesus says, I didn't come to serve, but to serve, right? And so there are so many opportunities in our lives. And this is not just a plug for our like, hey, serve in the church. I would argue that you need to serve in your church and outside of the church, that there are so many different areas that we can be serving and allow that to grow our faith. And lastly, I would say, take risks with our faith. I think we in the, in the, really the Western church, we've become so comfortable with our faith. And I think that's part of why a lot of us, like our faiths, they grow stagnant and we quit building. And I would challenge you to look at your life and, and maybe identify some areas you can take a risk. Maybe that is going on a trip. Maybe that is, you know, serving in the children's ministry. I don't know, like, uh, maybe, it, I, I don't know what it may be for you. But I would tell you, I would bet for all of us a risk we could take is actually sharing our faith, sharing the gospel. I, I will tell you, like, even in, in my circle, when I have opportunities to share the gospel, I know I could feel my heart rate go up, right? Like I'm starting like, okay, here we go, Jesus, you know? And it's like, all of a sudden, I bet you if I looked at my watch, the, my pulse would be up, right? Because it's a risk. But we know like when something challenges us, growth comes on the other side of that. And so I'd encourage you to build your faith, as Paul says. And these are, those are just a few ways that you can incorporate some things into your life to help you build your faith. I love all that. And, you know, all of those things that the spiritual disciplines that we have, it, it all comes down to, are we living lives of thankfulness? Are we developing a lifestyle of thankfulness? It's not just about coming together on Sunday morning, but it's all of our lives should really be to the honor and glory of Jesus. I'm gonna date myself here, I, I know, but there was a worship song a few years ago. Actually, it's probably about two decades ago. It's not a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems like a few years ago to me now, but um, there was a worship song that was super popular. Some of you who are older probably remember it. It went, I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Thank you for the few heads that were nodding at that. And it was like this really popular song at the time. And we had a, a young woman on our worship team who said, you know, I love that song, but 
you know, the reality is, is I'm not sure we're living that out. Like, we say that we want to worship him forever, but we're only going to give him so much time on a, on a Sunday morning, and we're not really living it on a regular basis. And so she changed the lyrics of the song to, I could sing of your love for half an hour. I could sing of your love for half an hour. Which if right? you remember, that's about how long they would do that <laughs> yeah, song Yeah, that's for, right. right? <laughs> yeah, we did sing it a lot. But the point is, is, you know, we laughed about it, but the point is, our lives are supposed to be a sacrifice of praise to God. We're supposed to be overflowing with thankfulness. Because we have received Christ Jesus as Lord, everything that we do, not just on Sunday morning, but everything that we do should be for him. When we come together on Sunday mornings, we should be anxious. We should be like dying to come into church to join with our brothers and sisters in Christ to worship him, not just to watch people on stage, but to actually engage ourselves in worship. And it's not just Sunday morning. It's our work. It's going to school. It's our interactions with our family and with our neighbors. It's being with people in our other places and sharing the gospel like like Josh said. All of that is really at the very core of what it means to be thankful that everything is being done to worship him and to thank him. I'm gonna get a little high church right now. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Westminster Catechism. If you haven't, just Google it. You can find out all about it. But it famously says this, man's chief end or the chief purpose of all people is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. You want to know what your purpose is? It's to glorify God and to enjoy him, to be so thankful for this relationship with Jesus that you get to daily walk with him, that you get to have fellowship with him on a regular basis. We should be excited about every day because we have this relationship with Jesus. I want everyone just to take a deep breath with me right now. (gasps) The end of the book of Psalms. That incredible book that has all these prayers and worship songs from the Old Testament, it ends, it's all summed up in this one verse, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you were breathing, which I think you all were, and I'm really thankful for that, then there's your purpose, to praise him, to give him thanks. That's at the core of discipleship. That's what it means, living thanks. You know, Paul really wraps these verses with that, right? And the NIV, it says, overflowing with thankfulness. And the ESV, which we use, is also says, abounding in thanksgiving. And again, what Paul is doing here is he's, he's painting a picture with words here. And the, the picture he is painting is a river overflowing its banks. And, and so as you imagine, like the water's just rising and then just spilling over the banks. He's saying that the mark of a mature Christian is a life that is overflowing with thanksgiving. And you think about that. That means we, as we grow in our faith, should find more and more to be thankful for and that it would begin spilling out of our lives. And that would be who we are. But yet, I know that is a, a tough thing. I know just kind of the way I'm wired, my disposition, and um, that is not something that comes supernatural for me, just to be overly thankful. And in a moment, I'll share a few things that I've engaged that have helped me kind of grow in this area of my life. But I think in our culture, it's really easy to live lives that are not thankful. Yeah, I think this week is it's around everything and it's easy to start thinking about like, oh, I need to be thankful for this. Or as we get together on Thursday, often there's time, you know, time to share something you're thankful for. And so it's a little bit easier this week, but I think for the most part, it, it's a challenge for us. And I, I believe that's partly because we live in a culture that really does not want us to be thankful, right? We live in a culture that is constantly telling us that we need more. Right, we live in a culture that is really about discontent. I mean, think about all the commercials. It's like you would be happier if you just bought this. You would be happier if you just ate this. You would be happier if you took this medication, followed by 60 seconds of things that might kill you. But like, you would be <laughs> for that little bit you lived. You're going to be more thankful, right? You're more happy, and and right. We live in a world that it's like. Oh, we look at our neighbors and we think if I just had, if I had those vehicles, like that would be perfect. Or if I had the house over there, that would be perfect. And we just live in this culture that kind of feeds discontent, which really stands in opposition to what the gospel should feed in our life. 
And when we look at the gospel, right, and we look at how often Paul in Scripture calls us to be thankful, but it really is a sharp contrast between the world and Scripture. And so we need to break through that discontent, and we need to have those lives that Paul talks about that are overflowing with thankfulness because those do, that shows a life that's beginning to look more and more like Jesus. Right, and there's a few different things I think we can do to help develop lives that abound in Thanksgiving. And I would recommend a few practices. And um, honestly, I think it just starts, and not, I probably shouldn't say just in there. I think it starts with understanding what we have in salvation. Right, understanding who we are. Understanding that when it comes to the gospel, we do not deserve Jesus. We don't deserve a relationship with God. We deserve, scripture tells us very clearly, I know this like, oh, this is supposed to be happy. Um, it is happy because of what we get, but we deserve death. But God gave us, God the Father gave us Jesus to pay the price for our sin so that we can experience salvation. And so you may look at your life and think, I don't have much to be thankful for. If you are one breathing and you have a relationship with Jesus, that's where it starts. Right, yeah. daily, I would challenge you every day to look in the mirror and say, like, you do not deserve Jesus. But God loved me so much, he gave me Jesus. And because of that, I could experience salvation. So I'm gonna start the day thankful Amen. that God loves me and God sent Jesus, right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. we could cheer for that. Yeah. I think to continue down that road, and I'll tell you, this is something I started about two years ago, so I know some of you are like, man, you're one of our pastors and you're just starting this stuff? Um, he's like, yeah, God's working in my life too. Um, <laughs> I started, do, I keep a journal. I, I don't journal in it every day, but I, I look at it every single day because my reading plan's in there. But what I do is I actually, and this is just how I have to pray to stay focused. I have my list and I have each person in my family there, but whatever. I have the date that I enter in a prayer request, the prayer, and then I have answered. And I actually put the date in how it was answered. And why I do that is I knew I needed to foster more thankfulness in my life. And often I would just find myself generically saying like, thank you, Father, for what you've done in my life. But this is how it allows me, and so if you're kind of wired like me, this allows me to see where God has moved over the last couple, like specifically where he's moved. And it, allow, it fosters thankfulness because I could look at some of the yeses and say, thank you, Lord, for doing this because it only happened because of you. Honestly, I look at some of the no's, which I was like, come on, Lord, are you kidding me? Like, I try to live <laughs> for you, right? Like, and you said no, and I see how those no's were good for me or good for our family. And I thank God for those no's. And there are some that have just sat there, they're still waiting to be filled in, and I'm gonna be like the woman that's going to the judge, like, come on, God, like, you gotta answer this, right? And so I, allow, I use this as a practice, though, to really help me grow, like, in my thankfulness and seeing where God moves. Another thing you could do is just each day, in the day, by saying thank you to God for something and what it meant to you. Yeah, and I know, like, I'm sure if you're like me, there's, you, there's plenty of days you go through where nothing real exciting happens, right? Like, you just kind of go through your day, and someone's like, how was your day? You're like, what? Good. You know, and that's about <laughs> it. And so I realize not every day are you going to lay down on your pillow and be like, oh, Lord, you did this major thing today. And I would just, you know, I know on days like that for me, literally as I'm falling asleep, I just, lift, I just lay there and I just say, thank you for my wife. Because I don't know why anyone would love me like she does. Some of you are like, I know you, I pray for her. You know, like, <laughs> like, thank you for her. Thank you for my boys. Thank you for this, right? And so you kind of end your day before God saying thank you. And I do want to say, I know that some of you are watching online. Some of you are here. You're walking through hard things. And so I, I get it. This idea of being thankful is really hard right now. I would encourage you in those seasons to go to Jesus because when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, remember he prayed. He prayed, Father, if there is any other way, this is before he goes to the cross, if there's any other way, right? Jesus is saying like, Father, if I don't have to go through the pain and suffering I'm about to go through, like now would be a good time for an audible. Now would be a good time for a new plan. But then he says, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And so in 
really, Jesus was told no. And he had to walk through that pain. And so I'd encourage you, if you're in a time of hardship, to go to Jesus and thank him for being a savior that can identify with your hardship and walk through that hardship with you. Lastly, I would say this, stay away from comparative statements. Stay away from if I only had this or looking at people and making those statements. And I think as you begin to engage some practices like that on thankfulness, it'll help build up that in your life to where you, like Paul said, have a life that is overflowing, that you are breaking the banks with thankfulness in your life. You know, right now we're gonna transition into a time of worship. And I just encourage you during this time to find those things to just come before God and be thankful for. If it's in that time of hardship, be again, be thankful for a savior that can identify with your pain. If you're in a time that is great, begin identifying those things. Just say thank you, Lord, during this time of worship. And then at the end of this, uh, Mark's gonna come back out and just kind of give you a reminder and an exercise that can point you back to this time uh, or point you back to the attitude of thankfulness. Would you pray with me as we go into this time of worship? Father, we come to you, and Lord, we just thank you so much for Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that just Jesus is enough, Father. And um, Lord, help us as we come before you in worship to really not just know that, but believe that, Father. And come before you with a heart of thankfulness. Lord, let us be different in this world because we're thankful and because we live out the scriptures that, that call us and point us to the attitude we ought to have, the attitude that looks like Jesus. So I ask, Lord, that you would now just hear our worship as we come before you. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Mm-hmm.